Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to talk about Smart Install Maker and how to make installers using this program. So, I'm going to open it up and you can see it's all done in a UI. You don't write any scripts or anything and it's really nice and abstracting. There's lots of things you can do with it. Um, and I highly recommend it, but it is a paid program. So, we're going to make an installer for Image Viewer Enhanced. So the product name is Image Viewer Enhanced. And the version is 3.0.5. And my company name, Abel Opus, it's just me. And my website, not sure where this is displayed, but we're just going to take them to my home page. And a support link, so you probably want to leave Mail2 in there, otherwise the support link won't work properly. I personally use my personal email. If you get a lot of emails uh, regarding your applications, you might want to make an email dedicated to your software. Personally, I only get like five emails of feedback for all of my applications uh, per year, so I definitely use my personal email. It just makes it easier for me. Um, a lot of the times, people's uh, feedback, like they imply that they're afraid that they're wasting my time or something. A lot of users don't understand that feedback is is very wanted by programmers. Um, so we're going to save this as in a certain directory. So this is the build or, Excel, or setup executable. We're going to save this in the parent directory of image viewer enhanced. I have a uh, parent directory because this solution once had multiple projects and now it does not. So I'm just going to call this um, image viewer enhanced setup. You can shorten it if you wish but I don't want to. Okay so we're done with general here. We're going to go down to files and add a file. I only need to add one file so we're going to add a source file here and that's going to be in the release directory. And we're going to leave all this stuff default and we're done here. We're going to move down to requirements. So we have a list of a bunch of Windows operating systems. I'm going to keep these all checked because the application is specific to the .NET platform and it's very simple. If it works on the .NET platform and the platform can run on these Windows operating systems then, which it probably can, then it's okay. So all this stuff doesn't really matter. Let's go down to check the .NET Framework version. Personally, my Framework version is 4. I don't require, I'm not really using any of the features of 4.5. Uh, plus, there's, non, there's not really an explicit 4.5 requirement. You'd have to select 4.0 and above if, you have, if you're using 4.5. Even in the case where you have a project targeting framework version 4.5 and the user has 4 and you have this checked, at least when they go to run the application, it will be recognized as a valid executable and you'll, they'll probably get a pretty descriptive error message saying what they should do. Um, just it's, it's not so bad if you think about it. Um, but it would be nice if there was a, a target framework or a requirement here for just .NET Framework 4.5. You can also open the following web page if they don't have the required framework version. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the uh, 4.0 download. Okay, so here's the link. Just found it. And that's all we need to do for requirements. And we're going to go down to dialogues here, and I'm going to uncheck show the welcome page. We really don't need that. And I'm going to remove the company name from the destination path because we're not installing multiple projects. Um, and I'm not too popular or anything, so I don't expect them to be installing a lot of my projects. Okay, and I think I can leave all this stuff default down here. Let's uh, go to complete installation tab. And if you want to, you can show the 
the launch application checkbox. I'm not going to do this because this is an image viewer and the user would really only want to open it if they are opening it with an image. Okay, we're done here. Let's go down to interfaces. You can customize the interface a bit and um, I think I'm just going to leave it default other than the un uninstaller icon. This is the icon that appears in the control panel when they go to uninstall the um, application. Um, typically you should just make it your application icon. Just makes it easier to find for the user. And we'll go down to shortcuts. We're going to create a desktop. No, this is not where you do it, but oh yeah, it is. So we're going to um, hit the plus button down here and we're going to create a shortcut on the desktop. So the shortcut name is going to be the product name. We're going to use the macro here and the file is going to be the only file that we have and that's the executable. So that's the shortcut that we're going to point to, but that's the file that the shortcut is going to point to. We don't need command line parameters and we don't uh, need any start in or comment stuff, but we should probably choose our icon file. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see if it will automatically set itself to the icon of the executable. I doubt that it will, but we're going to try it. And we're going to go down to uh, the next thing, which is the uninstaller group down here, general. We're going to click on that. And up here, the custom add remove name, we're going to remove the version number because that's redundant. And we're going to remove this. Okay, let's take a look at some of these other things. I think we're about done. So I'm going to build this. And it's completed. Now let's run it. So we got to create a desktop icon here. And we're going to hit install. Oh, would you look at that? The icon has a uh, the applications icon automatically set so that's pretty cool and we can take a look at where it's installed to see if everything's installed correctly in this case it's quite apparent that it's been installed correctly because it's a single file but you may want to take a look at it wherever it may be and I'm going to go into the control panel to make sure that it's looking nice there So there it is, image viewer enhanced without the version number. Then you get the version number to the right here. You really need to know. I'm gonna hit uninstall. And it's gone. Perfect. I'm curious to see where the website and the support link are displayed in the install or uninstall process. So we're gonna take a look at that. definitely in the uninstall process so we're going to have to take a look at that okay so here's where the support link and the help link are displayed so this will open up a new tab for me for some reason uh, I might actually try to open up Outlook for you or, or the user um, and the support link here just links me to the home page. I'm probably going to dedicate a page on my website for this saying oh, well, you can you can contact me for any reason and here's some different ways you can contact me. I think that's what you should do too just to let the user know that you care about them and their computers. I think that's all there is to talk about. So we'll see you later.